Hey everybody, we're back doing Factory I.O. This would be scene number four. It looks something like this. You get three boxes to get in a row here, and then you send all three down off the end. I'll play this. So you have a rock sensor or photo eye across there. You got three on this conveyor, and then you send them down in groups of three. And to do this, you're supposed to use a counter in DIA portal. So you'll let them all go down off the end. Like that. And then you keep going, let another group of three go. So you open up Factory IO. Um, the order I like to do it is I open up the TIA portal, I make a new project, I uh, create go in line with the processor, and then I open up um, Factory IO, go to the scene that I need, but I already have it open here. Here is the scene, this is what it looks like. And again, to turn off your um, sensors and your inputs and outputs basically are up here. So you, and then when you open it up, it'll, this will be there, but you can get rid of that. Um, I'm just leaving these on so you can get an idea of what my IO is talking about when you look at the ladder logic. And you're gonna need to go to file and drivers. I already have this all set up. Go to configuration. Um, I have this configured already. You're going to have to change your offset to 10. Um, then I go here and I output the tag table and then I import it into TIA portal, which I did in the video before this. So then my tag table looks like, where am I here? Show all tags. Looks like this. So all these ones that say tag table from XML, those are all ones that were imported and these ones, the current count, exit count, and counters reset, those are all tags I made, so that's why they look different. Um, let's look at our logic. We only have one function block, and I didn't rename it. It's the default block one. The way that I had this work was I had the buffer conveyor. Let me flip back over here. This is the buffer conveyor over here. There's two separate conveyors with two separate motors. So this is the entry conveyor. And then right here is where the cutoff is from the entry conveyor to the buffer conveyor. So I have the entry conveyor running. Oh, wrong one. There's my entry conveyor. I have it running anytime that hasn't counted three boxes yet. So my buffer conveyor, my buffer conveyor runs anytime this beam is blocked. So I'm going to feed boxes in. As soon as this beam gets blocked, it'll run the whole time it's blocked. So it'll just move the box right to here and after that gets out of the way of the beam it'll stop and when the next one goes it'll do the same thing so that's the idea of feeding three into a group in a row right here and it's going to count how many boxes went through once it gets three it's going to push them all off the end so i have the buffer conveyor runs anytime that entry uh, photo eye is blocked which is right here so if this is blocked if there's a box in front of it it'll run so that the box doesn't get jammed up it'll feed it onto the next conveyor and then I also have a branch around it that if the box counter, which is down here, that's the process, the uh, PV is set to three. So when the box counter counts to three, it'll go around that entry and it'll keep the buffer conveyor running. So it'll count three, it'll get them all right here. And after that counter gets up to three, it'll keep this on until they run off the end. And then I have this sensor over here counting to three. So after it counts three boxes went off, then it'll start again and I'll turn this one back on. So um, down here is my counter. I, so all I have are four rungs. I have my buffer conveyor rung, my entry conveyor rung, and I labeled the networks here and put some comments in. And then I have my three box counter and I have my exit counter. And like I said, it, it's there's two conveyors, this conveyor, that conveyor, and it counts three in a row right here. Once it gets three in a row, it turns this conveyor off, leaves this one on until it counts three going through this beam, one, two, three. After it does that, it resets all the counters and goes back to the original state where it's feeding them in, turning this one back on, feeding them in, counting three, turning this one off, feeding all three down until it counts three off the other end. So it looks like um, I can show you what these counters do when I run this. Give it play.
Oh, I'm not in. Uh, there we go. Now we can see what they're doing. So this is going to count to three. There we are. We got our three on. Now they're going off the end. You see them? Now this is counting to three. When that counts to three, it resets both counters. Now it's in feeding, counted one, counted two. You can see the count right here. And there's three. So when that energizes, it stops the infeed conveyor, this conveyor here. I don't remember if that's what they call it here. Um, it stops this the motor's down there. Entry conveyor, they call it here. So once it, this counter that's counting going past here counts to three, it'll stop this conveyor and then it'll latch around up top to keep this one on until this one counts to three, which is this bottom one. Then you know that all three are off there, then everything resets and it goes back. And again, it looks like this up top. So now because it counted to three, it latches around there and it keeps this conveyor running the whole time until that other one counts to three and then it resets this counter. And then the integrate conveyor comes back on. So that's that. I had a little bit of trouble figuring out how to configure this with just doing counters. The first way I did it, um, actually it's going to end up in a weird spot. Now if you stop it in a weird spot when there's no boxes on it and you reset it, now it says that I have three boxes and the, it's hard to reset the counters. Um, the first way that I had it was I had this three box counter and it would feed three boxes on and like it was doing and once they got here it would turn this conveyor on and it was just on a timer So I had it for like 10 seconds until these all ran down and then everything would go back to normal But I knew there had to be a way to use just counters to do it and it took a little while for me to figure it out But it's easier if you just have one counter counting these on and then you just have it run off for a certain amount of time I think I had 10 seconds with a timer um, But the idea is that you run everything with counters and after I put a little more time into it I figured a way to do it with just four rungs so one rung for each conveyor, and then uh, one rung for each one of the timers, timer, or counter, I should say. Counter's going in, and then the counters of the boxes coming out. So that is it. Good luck.